she met them once, or if they were a passerby at the airport. She just had a way of touching people. One of my friends um, that met her one time in January summed it up perfectly. She said that she was so thankful for having the chance to meet Reagan, even though it was just once, because Reagan had touched a part of her soul that she didn't even know existed. She said her life would forever be changed from having that chance to meet Reagan. I think there were many things about Reagan that drew people to her. One of them, I think, was that, that infectious smile and happiness that she bounced everywhere she went. Carried that everywhere. Another thing I think was the sweetness of how close she held Shelby. I mean, her mom was her foundation. She was her rock and her security in life. And as long as she knew Shelby was there, everything was good. If Shelby was just at the store, she might ask every 30 minutes, where's my mommy? Where's my mommy? But as long as she knew that security was going to be back, never, she could do anything. I think another thing that, that people noticed that drew people to her was the way she would light up whenever Patrick walked in the room. <laughs> Nobody could make that girl shine and sparkle the way her daddy could. Nobody. He was the coolest thing to live on earth. And we could all be hanging out the minute he walked out of the living room, even if all he did was shower. Just him coming back in lit her up again. Another thing that was striking about Reagan was that independent personality. She knew what she wanted. She knew what she didn't want. She was going to do it herself. You weren't going to change her mind or convince her. And it could be something as simple and as hard deciding she didn't want to be referred to as Reagan that day. One morning, um, Shelby walked into the kitchen and Reagan was, I think, washing my dishes. <laughs> And Shelby said, Reagan, she didn't answer. Reagan, she didn't answer. Shelby said that a few more times. And finally, as a matter of fact, as ever, Reagan said, I shall be. She was going to be called Shelby that day. She was not going to be called Reagan. <laughs> she was a blessing to everybody, everybody that she touched. She was such a blessing, too. And we were so blessed. She especially touched our family. She was my five-year-old's very, very first best friend. And Anna just cherished her. She just adored everything about Megan. She would get so excited every time we were going to see her. And she would, even though they were about the same height, she would still bend down when she saw her. Like she was her little caretaker, and she'd get her little high-pitched caretaker voice. Ray Ray, it was always Ray Ray to her. Ray Ray, do you want to have a snack? But it, she was always taking care of her. And they loved watching movies with popcorn and playing with the babies and the buggies and eating their ice cream and dressing up like the picture of Reagan and Elmo. Those crazy girls dressed up in their costumes and trooped all over the mall in Charleston, South Carolina. <laughs> they got some of the best smiles from passerbys I have ever seen there. She, uh, she showed me how strong of a connection even little ones that age can have. Her and Emma had such, such a closeness. The first time that we saw Reagan after she lost all of her hair for a month straight, my five-year-old begged me to please get a haircut like Reagan. She just so desperately wanted, you know, to be like her best friend. And we were very thankful for all of the joy and love that our family got from Reagan. And that all of that that we will always hold dear forever. And the lessons we learned from Reagan and Pat and Shelby, they're all three wonderful examples in life for everybody. We know that even though we have this earthly pain here of missing her so much, we know that her pain and suffering are gone. She gets to be happy and healthy and go back to bouncing around the way that she always did. Today, Reg
Brandon has brought all of us together. She's brought everybody together in this room to love and support one another, to help each other get through this and be there for each other. And one thing that we do, my daughter, we'll probably talk about her every day for the rest of her life. She still talks about her every night before bed. And we, we talk to her again, we talk to her every day. And she will probably get her fill of conversations from Emma, even though she's in heaven. Emma's still making up lots of stories of trips that her and Reagan are taking, some to planets that don't exist, some to places in the neighborhood. So she, Reagan is definitely keeping her nice and, she's keeping her memory nice and alive um, in Emma and in our house. And just in closing, I'd like to just say a few words to Reagan because we really enjoy at home talking to Reagan. And Reagan, just me again. You will always be my sugar bear. I will always love you. We all love you so, so much. One day we're all going to be up there playing with you. And until we all get up to you, I just hope that you are having a wonderful, wonderful